Well, that shouldn't be too hard to follow. <laughs> oh, oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please suffer through me until the next act, and, uh, and then we'll all go get drunk. <laughs> it is my uh, first time here in Canada, and uh, I'm very excited because I like to smoke, and uh, you can smoke anywhere here in Canada. Everyone smokes, you can smoke anywhere. Today I shared a cigarette with a pregnant woman in a church. <laughs> it was delightful. I do smoke quite a bit. I'm not the outdoorsy type. Uh, friends of mine love the outdoors, personally. I don't see it, but they're crazy for it. They told me about this wonderful excursion that they take, and they suggested that I do it as well. They said, it's really wonderful, Paul. What we do is, uh, once a month, we go to this farm where this farmer has a cherry orchard, and uh, we give the guy $25, and he gives us a bushel basket and a ladder, and we go out in the orchard, and we climb up on the ladder, and we just pick our own cherries right there off the tree. Just pick them off the tree and put them in the basket. It, you're out there in the fresh air and the sunshine. It's really quite delightful. Well, well, well. It seems that someone has stolen my idea for the migrant worker fantasy camp. <laughs> How do you like that? See, because maybe you did some migrant working in college and you were pretty good. You could have turned pro, but you broke your leg or something like that. This is your chance to work alongside the greats of migrant farm working. Maybe one of them will sign your bushel. <laughs> bushel is a funny word. The other day, I was, uh, I was in a department store and I saw this cheap little toy called the Titanic Bot. That was the name of it, the Titanic Bot. And it's a little toy of the Titanic. You flip it a few times, it becomes a robot. Now here's the flaw in this toy making design. The Titanic was a real thing that actually existed, and we know for a fact, it never turned into a robot. It's not like someone just forgot, to, oh, did I neglect to mention 95 years ago, the famous ocean liner, the Titanic, was also a giant rampaging robot? But see, I like to picture the Japanese toy manufacturer putting this concept together, you know? A little girl love a Titanic, a little boy love robot. We put together, sell to both. You make Titanic bot now. Do not dishonor company. You must wear ribbons of shame. Now see folks, in comedy, anytime you introduce an Asian dialect, you must also introduce the concepts of shame and dishonor, you know? Like you remember the old Calgon commercial where the Chinese wife embarrasses the Chinese husband in front of the round eye Western woman, you know? We need more Calgon, ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> now see, I like to imagine then when the commercial goes to black, the husband turns to the wife and says, you dishonor family! And then they both commit ritual suicide. <laughs> now, folks, I know that Chinese people don't do that, but I'd like to think that we're all the same. <laughs> That's my message! All right. I am... Uh... You're going to learn a little something tonight. Read your scripture. I am... Uh... I am of Irish descent, and uh, growing up Irish, I had to hear terrible, horrible stories of the terrible, horrible Irish potato famine of the 18-somethings, uh, and uh, how horrible it was. Now, folks, millions of people died. Millions of people died. Why? Because there were no potatoes. <laughs> Are these the pickiest people in the world, or what? I mean, come on. Oh, my belly's all bloated and distended. I'm dying. If only I had a potato. <laughs> oh, please, great God in the sky, please make it rain potatoes. I'm dying. Why don't you, uh, why don't you try some corn? <laughs> I don't like corn. Are you sure you probably never even tried it? Oh, yes, I did. Remember that wedding they had corn that time? Didn't care for it over much. No, didn't like it. Well, you got to do something. Just eat some corn. See, I have a problem with uh, texture. Some things feel weird in my mouth, and corn's just kind of icky and gross. Don't like it. Well, all right, then. Go ahead and starve to death. Uh, yeah, that's what I was doing before you had to interview me for your book about corn. <laughs> See, that was like a little play. <laughs> and I played both the parts. It's very exciting. Live theater. Who'd have thought it? 
I don't understand why people write letters to magazines, you know? It just accomplishes nothing. It's a waste of effort and a stamp. I can maybe understand it if you're mad at the magazine, you know? You want to fire off an angry missive. Dear magazine, I am most displeased. Ugh. There, you've struck a blow for all of us, and God love you. But what I don't understand is people that write letters to magazines just to say how much they agreed with a review or how much they liked a particular article, you might as well write to the grocery store, hey, thanks for putting your eggs in a carton. Makes it a lot easier to get them home. Hmm. Oh, I'm on a letter writing tear. Dear alarm clock, thanks for waking me up in the morning. Oh, well, you can't read this because you're just a thing. My favorite letters are the letters to People magazine, or as I call it, one person, Leo DiCaprio. <laughs> I am wicked. These letters, People write letters to people just to say how much they liked the picture on the cover. That's their whole letter, what the hell? Dear People's Magazine, thanks so much for putting a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio on the cover of your book. It is nice of you to put pictures of things I like on the front part of your magazine. For future reference, here's some other things I like. I like tomatoes, tea cozies, some dogs, most cats. There's a cat in my neighborhood named Speedy I'm awful fond of. Maybe you could put a picture of him on your magazine. I don't know if you'd send a photographer to take a picture of him or a sketch artist to draw a picture of him, but you better be quick because they don't call him Speedy for nothing. Oh, well, I better sign off now because all the blood's leaving my head. Love a big dumb jackass. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Canada. And you're welcome for being entertained by me. Paul F. Tompkins. I was in the airport. Those treadmills they've got are huge. Because Americans are always saying things that there's not that much proof for. You hear us say things like, uh, we're number one! 